Proverbs chapter 14, and we'll pick up where we left off on verse 19. And we're looking at places in the Bible with if or, good or bad. Where do I stand? And it's great that the book of Proverbs, Psalm is written that these verses we can check ourselves. Are we good in the Lord or do we have problems with the Lord? And yes, it's an Old Testament book, but it's good. Verse 19. The evil bow before the good. And the wicked at the gates of the righteous. That's the millennium. I can show you Facebook posts where innocent people are bowing down before other races of people, let's say, and they are kissing the feet. And as they got signs that are mocking Jesus in the Bible. And they're promoting that you bend over and kiss their feet. And they're evil. But as we grow closer to the Lord coming, the Bible says, the, you know, we're going to be apostate and things are going to get worse. The worse and the further we're going to get to the Bible. The poor is hated even of his own neighbor. And, I mean, it's almost general that the neighbor would be poor. What can I get from my poor neighbor? I can't get nothing. You ain't got nothing for me. He's in the same ship I'm in. But the rich has many friends. The prodigal son had many friends when he had the money. When the money was gone, so were the friends. Now the Bible says friends because that's what they call themselves. And relationship not being rich, but I've had many Christian friends. And they're all gone. With persecution and, and you know, living for the Bible is so harsh. And that's the thing in the book of James that we're not to have partiality to those that have money. It's a sin. It's using somebody. He that despises his neighbor sinneth. Well, read that with verse 20. Neighbor sinneth, despising. Do you have somebody in your church that are over there and you want them over there because you don't like them? Are you despising them? You've sinned against God. John says to the Christians, we're not to hate our brethren. Despising is a way of hate. I don't want him near me. I don't want him associated with us. Now, if you got a separation because you want to live right and they don't want to live right, that, that's not the case. You despise your neighbor for whatever reason. But he that has mercy on the poor, happy is he. And that just runs right back to verse 20. The context of 21 is verse 20. You can't hate your neighbor because they're poor. That's a sin. You're to have mercy on them. Oh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go be a missionary. I'm gonna go teach all the world about what about your neighbors? How are they doing? How are you doing with your neighbors? Oh, I don't talk to them, you know, because they're them people. They're a lower class than me. 
and you've sinned against an almighty God. He that has mercy on the poor, happy is it? You want to be happy? Now you've got to rightly divide also today if they're truly poor. Do they not err? That devise, that devise evil. But mercy and truth shall be to them that devise good. So there's mercy and truth and it goes in opposition of error. Or error. And they have a device that is evil. And you have someone who devised good. We know evil is not good and good is not evil. And the outcome of your device, is it evil or is it good? Where do you stand? And if it's evil, you have erred or erred. And if it's a good device, there's mercy and truth. What is the motivation? What is the motive that you are doing? I'm going to help them out, context 2021, and I'm going to take selfies of me helping them out. After I do what I'm going to do, I'm going to call the newspaper, I'm going to notify the pastor, and I'm going to show everybody how good I am. That's evil. That's self-righteous. In all labor, there's profit. All labor. But the talk of the lips tendeth only to punery. That's the first time that word shows up. And it's saying, talk is cheap. Your spouse comes in from the house. Look at all the tomatoes and cucumbers and, and green beans, everything I got from the garden today. Look at it all. Wow. That's a profit. Well, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the store. I'm going to buy me some seeds and I'm going to tear up that ground and I'm going to plant me a mighty good garden and get all the vegetables. And When are you going to do it? Oh, I'll do it. But when are you going to do it? I'll do it. Talking is not labor. Now you can talk, but does your talk have a walk? I'll read my Bible. Are you reading your Bible? Well, uh -oh. I'll get saved. Well, why don't you get saved? Well, you know, I got things to do. I don't want to live my life. Your talk is cheap. Do it. Before you lose it. It's so plain and simple. The crown of the wise. Is their riches but foolishness of fools is folly wise is opposite of foolish there's a crown for being wise and we know it's a biblical wisdom and guess what there's another crown we read about a crown the other night But look, foolishness of fools is folly. Christian fools don't get a crown. Your foolishness, you will not wear a crown in the eternal life.
We've done a complete study on Fool, and you better go find that study about Fool and better read and study that, and you can download the lesson. If you don't want to watch it, you can download the, 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 uh, the Word document and read it, or you can watch and listen and to learn how not to be a fool so you can get a crown. A true witness delivers souls. Look at chapter 19, verse 5. All right, 14, 5, 14, 5. 14.5 A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. A true witness will deliver soul. And he's not going to do it lying, because what? A deceitful witness speaketh lies. If you don't lie, you are a faithful witness you are a true witness. When you're about with a lie, you are a false witness or you are a deceitful witness. You can either tell the truth or you can speak lies. You're not going to do both. And if you do do both in the gospel, tell lies, and the truth, you're walking down the middle of the road and that makes God sick. When somebody comes to your door and tells you that Jesus is not God, they're not a Jehovah witness, they are a false witness. And you better show them in the Bible where they're wrong. If you can't show them in the Bible, just close the door and and send them off. Don't you dare say have a good day, have a bright day, and whatever kind of day. In the fear of the Lord is a strong confidence. Not just confidence, a strong confidence. And his children, God's children, shall have a place of refuge. Now that verse doesn't have an either or. That verse is one contest. Those that fear that God are safe, are strong, confident. And when there is a trouble, when there is a storm, there is a problem, there is a conflict. Jesus said about Israel abroad with her, with her chicks. But you wouldn't have it. Get under the wings of God, the, the, the strong confidence. And the refuge. In the arms of Jesus. The fear of the Lord. Is a fountain of life. Revelation 21 6. Going to the end of the book. We're at the end. One more chapter. Revelation 21 6. And he said unto me. It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, that's Jesus. The beginning and the end, that's Jesus Christ. I will give unto him that a thirst, the fountain of the water of life. Freely. The fear of the Lord is Jesus Christ. Scripture with Scripture. Jesus said, I am the water of life to depart from the snares of death. Again, 26, 27 is not yea or nay, right or wrong. It's one content. The fear of the Lord is a strong content. His children have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, not death, to depart from the snares of death. And there are things that will trap you that will kill you. Alcohol, tobacco, drugs, sex. Being foolish will be a snare of the devil. 
famous last words of a fool. Hey, watch me do this. I've done it a hundred times. It's okay. It won't bite. It won't hurt. I'm okay. Those are the snares of death. In the multitude of people, a lot of people, is the king's honor. Wow. Look at all my royal subjects. Hopefully his royal subjects are his loyal subjects. You can be a royal but not loyal. It didn't say president, it said king. But the want of people is the destruction of the prince. When you got an entire county, I was saying, you got an entire city, county, region, state, <laughs> or country, and you got a bunch of people that want something, that will destroy your city, your county, your region, your state. And your government. All they want is want, 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 want. We, me, 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 me. That's not healthy for a government. I want, want, want. And then you get angry and then, you know, bitter. We saw about bitter. Those people don't, you know, it's not being content. You know what the problem with Israel? In the wilderness, they were not content. They did not believe God. They did not trust God. How, I mean, excuse me, he that is slow to wrath is of great understanding. But he that is a hasty of spirit exalted folly. So either slow or you're hasty. Now, it does, it does not say anger. Because the Bible says, be angry and sin not. But when you go so far as road rage, or you beat your children without, listen, if you're going to discipline your children, here's the number one rule. Don't do it instantly. Yes, the Bible says, spare not the rod, but give it time, think it out. It is wrong to be soon angered over your child and just give it slow being like let it just sit back tell your children you know the punishment is coming just calm down but if you get in that rage and people accuse me of it i don't have that rage they they think i got because if i got that rage i would have been rested two weeks ago i would have been rested last saturday if i got that rage and people say when, when someone came and, and attacked me with words, and I got that soon, wrath, I would have been arrested. It's, no, he acted pretty well. Now, I do get angry. Wrath is, is a step of sin above anger. I'm going to do something against. That's wrath. You can be angry and not sin. And when you're slow to wrath, it's great understanding. And notice there's to a point there, slow to, it doesn't say that wrath itself either. It's just you're slow to it. You Take it easy. And the more and more and more and more, just, why is it great understanding? You just sit back and think it out. They're just a jerk. They don't know what they're doing. They have no idea what, what's going on. They're just doing it to irritate. You know, just calm down. But he that is hasty, quick, that's the first time hasty shows, in spirit, exalted folly. We'll come back up to verse 12. The foolishness of the fools is folly. We'll go back to Proverbs chapter 1 for one example. <coughs> Verse 10. 
My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. And that guy, all right, let's go. That's what, that's what he's saying. And you move ahead without thinking of the, the, the possibility, without thinking the consequences. And it turns out to be foolish. Hasty in spirit. You know, the preacher gets up there, a guest preacher gets up, well, I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to give my life for Jesus. You just realize what you just said. Do you know what the Bible says about a disciple? Not all Christians are disciples. All Christians are saved, but you got to give up your family, your husband, your wife, your children, your mother, your father, even yourself. People don't think about that with discipleship. I mean, yeah, the preacher should, all right, this is what the Bible, this is what a church is, this is what a Christian is. That's not discipleship. That's learning the Christian that's growing as a Christian. Disciple is, I'm going to go out and I'm going to do and I'm going to have to put my armor on because people are going to try to kill me. The world, the devil, and other Christians are going to try to kill me. And don't be too hasty. Listen, the first time I stepped out and I ran with my wife, Lisa, I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm, from day one, we were attacked. Day one. And I said, I'm going, to, I'm going to keep serving. I don't care what happens. I'm going to keep serving. I sort of knew. Hasty and spirit will be another one. Oh, this is just a wonderful brand new car. You'll just fit right in. Your family will just love you. Just, just hurry up and sign on the dotted line and it can be yours. Yay! Oh, it's that much? <laughs> oh, it breaks down that often? That's folly. A sound heart, that's healthy heart, is a life of the flesh. Look at Leviticus 17.11. Oh, the Bible doesn't say anything about, you know, smoking cigarettes. Yes, it does. It doesn't say cigarettes. Let me show you what the Bible says. 1711. For the life of the flesh is the blood. And verse 14. For it is the life of the flesh, the blood of it is the life thereof. Go back to Proverbs. A sound heart is the life of the flesh. What pumps your blood? <clears throat> Do you know that this? Uh, I was I looked it up today and I was doing a thing. I'm surprised the warnings they put on cigarettes today. I mean, they actually put graphic pictures. When I was smoking, the Surgeon General was determined that cigarette smoking can cause emphysema, COPD, and you know lung cancer. It's been advised by the Surgeon General that if you are involved in a tobacco but and, and, and you know written warning. Today I, I, I saw pictures, actual graphic pictures. You know what the Surgeon General says about Proverbs 14 verse 30? If your cigarette help, your cigarette smoking is going to defile and disease your heart, that violates Proverbs 14.30 and Leviticus 17.11. Because if the heart is the life of the flesh and the blood is the life of the flesh, do you know what that tobacco is doing to your blood? And your alcohol. And your drugs. And your VDs, your sexually transmitted diseases, are in the blood. Diabetes is an infection of the blood. I have to prick my finger and get blood and put it on a meter to see what my sugar is. I 
I like what Ruckman says, and I, I believe his testimony. There was no blood in Adam and Eve until they ate that fruit. There could not have been death because there was no blood because life is in the flesh is the blood and the heart. But envy the rottenness of the bones. You can have a healthy heart, healthy body, or you can have rottenness in your bones. You can have Alzheimer's. I mean, that, that's not what I'm thinking about. Arthritis, that's arthritis. Sin affects your health. Envy will affect your health. Worrying help uh, affects your health. The Bible says, and I didn't study it out. When you try to look these things up, you see, you find 400 billion mile long words. But the Bible says, plain and simple, that envy is it causes bone trouble. You got bone trouble? Are you envying? You might want to tell that to your doctor. Now, he may not believe it, but God the Creator wrote it in his book. He that oppresses the poor, here we are on the poor, you, you, you pick on the poor, you give the poor a hard time, reproaches his maker, capital M. Now that's God the creator, and guess what? Guess who made the guy poor? God. Oh, we're in the ghetto, it's a family, it's... it's. No, it's not ge geographical, it's God. But he that honors him, God, has mercy on the poor. If you love the Lord, you're going to help the poor. When God gives you opportunity, God has given me opportunity. I got wet my throat. But again, you can't be stupid or foolish. Not everybody out there is poor. We met one guy one time. He was holding a sign and collecting money. And out of his lips, I don't have to pay taxes. I don't I don't claim. And I made a lot of money, he said. So not everybody you, you gotta try them. We had a person one time, I mean we saw and we, we, we you know get gasoline and all I don't want to brag about myself or anything. And when we got to the to the vehicle, I just thought there was even more poorness. They were not rich. They were not fooling around. They were not deceiving. They were on, and then they were taking gospel tracts and Bibles and everything. You better watch how you treat the poor. You know, for the we're in the Old Testament book, correct? You know, there was a law that you you had to treat those poor people right, and they weren't getting treated right in Jeremiah's time. The wicked is driven away in their wickedness. Look at Genesis 3, 24. You can't change the words of the Bible. Because, I don't know, and I didn't look it up, but if that word was what we just read, what we're looking about right now, let's say those words were changed. I don't know. I know some type of words are changed. You know you lose a cross-reference? 324. So he drove out man and placed in. So what's the description of man? Now. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness. Adam and Eve were driven off by God and they were wicked sinners. For disobeying the word of God. But the righteous has hope in his death. There is hope in the righteous of death, but there is the wicked being... You know what that verse is? That verse is a eternal verse. 
when a wicked man dieth, he's driven away from you. Well, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Adam and Eve were sinners. The wicked at the great white throne judgment depart from They're being driven away from Jesus and they'll never see Jesus again. And they'll never have a hope and they'll never be righteous. But those that are righteous with God, our hope is in our death. Paul says, oh, uh, well, to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Oh, I want to be with the Lord, but it's needful for me to be here. But if I had a chance, if I had a choice, I'd be out of here home. Wisdom rests in the heart of him that has understanding of God. The devil does not have understanding. But that which is in the midst of fools, opposite of wisdom, is made known. A fool just tells everybody in the world I'm foolish. A man will come up to me, you see that tattoo? Yeah, I'm a man. I look at him like, stupid. I don't say it, but I, I know you out there, yeah, I bet you don't say it. I know people come up to me and they'll show me their, their Christ on their metal cross. I had one, well, it wasn't a metal, it wasn't a silver or gold cross and died on me, but whew. how did they get Jesus so small? And do you, I mean, come on, lady, do you really appreciate, do you think Jesus really appreciates being between your boobs? I mean, that's, that's a place you want the holy, righteous God looking at your boobs. Really? People don't think. You're a fool. But the wisdom and understanding it, I know Jesus, I'm saved, and I know I'm going to heaven. I can't shut up about Jesus. It's about the Bible. It's about God. It's in my heart. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confesses man. Is, I ain't preaching Saturday morning. I'm just open up my mouth because my heart has received Jesus. I can't shut up. And y'all just come to hear me preach. Well, I take it you all come to hear me preach, but I'm going to come to you. Proverbs chapter 1. Now, verse 34. Is your American verse that is so perverted, so taken out of context. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Okay. Let's take the elevator all the way to the top floor of the Empire State Building. I've been there. I've been to the top of the Empire State Building. And I've looked out at you the time we went. You could look out, but it was foggy or, or cloudy or something. We couldn't see. So, I mean, I, but I've been to the that floor, the observation deck. Of the Empire State Building. So let's go to the top of the Empire State Building. And if you can do all things through Christ, I want you to do a belly flop onto the street below without a parachute. Without, just take a swan dive. And in all things through Christ, which strains me, you're going to hit that, that road and you're going to be perfectly alive and perfectly well. Now that's going to happen in the tribulation period. You're going to seek death and won't get it. I can do all things through Christ which strains me. All right, go heal everybody in the hospital. Close the hospitals down. Visit every, listen, if you had that power of everything that Christ, God would take care of you and people, you would be able to get gasoline money and you would be able to get a vehicle to travel to all 50 states and every country in the world. If you were to go with all things I could do through Christ, and heal everybody and close all the hospitals down. Or unless you're taking that verse by out of context. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. With the NIV. You skip midweek service because your children got ballerina. 
your children aren't on computer playing wicked games and looking at wicked pictures. Your wife is on the telephone bad-mouthing and gossiping about people in the church. And you couldn't answer a Bible question from your wife and children even if you had the internet to look it up. But it's great. I can, I can do all. So let's look at this perverted verse Americans do. Righteousness exalted the nation. But a sin is a reproach to any people. America is not in unrighteousness when we allow abortion. America is not in righteousness when you can turn on the television tube and a married person and a married person are, are kissing each other, holding each other, holding each other, hugging each other, having sex with each other in the name of adultery, but that's jacking up. You're not a righteous nation when your president is full of pride and proud. You're not a righteous nation when God and Jesus Christ are not allowed in the public school, not allowed in the prisons. You're not a righteous nation two weeks ago when the Daytona police are called trying to shut up the preacher preaching on the sidewalk where the Supreme Court said you can preach and you're to leave him alone and still telling a lawyer if he continues to preach of a righteous nation, we're going to arrest him. You're not a righteous nation when the government tells you in California, if you meet in the church service, we're going to arrest you. If you sing without a mask, we're going to arrest you. There were a group of people, I don't know where they were, they were on the street, they were singing without a mask and they were arrested. You're not a righteous nation when the Bible says if a man sheds another man's blood, you're to shed that man's blood and that man remains in jail and stays in jail and is fed by the taxpayers and he dies of natural causes. That verse is not America. Give it up. And if you're going to apply verse 34 to America, you have sinned against God, taking a verse out of context. You have perverted the word of God. You have not rightly divided the word of God. But sin is a reproach to any people. Again, I'm going to speak of my own testimony. When I get on the streets and I preach about three basic sins, Honor thy father and mother. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. We've all been terrible children. We've all stolen a little thing. We all have told that lie. Boys, I don't feel well today. <laughs> Can't come in. Take another step. You know, you know all the people that come knocking down the barricades, come running to me, falling on their knees and repenting for Jesus Christ to save their soul. This massive that the street and sidewalk is filled with people. Absolutely correctly not. You know what they say? Shut up! Call the police! Get him out of here! Move him somewhere else! Sin is a reproach to any people. There was a time for a while when I was going to church, I had to go about 25 miles to go to church. I go three times a week and I'm not feeling well. I mean, three times a week normal, I go to church. And I passed twice. And there was a billboard that offended me. I left it alone. It's off now. And there was a divorce lawyer who had advertised, had enough? Call the, call the divorce lawyer. That's not a sin that's reproach. That's a, just, just divorce him. That would have been a sign. You having marital troubles? Find this church. Get in the Bible and we'll help you get everything correct. How about the half naked women on billboards?
Half naked women, I, I don't have a television. I, I know they're there. How about the half naked women in the magazines that you got to look at while checking out the store? How about the lies coming from the media, from the newspapers, from the from the computers, from the television shows, from the radio? Don't you say righteousness is out the nation, America, and sin is a reproach to any. This America wants to sin. Americans want and delight in sin so you can find it in the pulpit. Find a church that celebrates Easter. You got a sin in the church, and they love it. Find a church that has an Easter egg hunt. You got a sin, it's filed in the church, and the people love it. Find a church, we had one down here before. They dropped Easter, uh, colored Easter eggs from a helicopter. That's a sin. They love it. That's not that's America. Find a church that has Christmas and keep Christ in Christmas and we'll have a birthday. That is a sin and they don't want to reproach it. They want to keep doing it because they like it. Find a, find a man. Well, you know, open your NIV, open your ASB, open your dumb, stupid, modern Bible. That's a sin. They love it and they keep on doing it in America. Even the Corinth church, one guy was sleeping with, with his father's wife. <laughs> America does that. You got pastors who have in the pulpit who have committed adultery against their wives and they're still in the pulpit. America, the great Christian nation. <laughs> Don't you dare apply Proverbs 14 to 34 to America because America loves her sin. It is a shame to find on an alcohol box a booze drink responsible. But America, righteousness is hope for the nation, but sin is re Don't drink our beer. It makes you an idiot. America doesn't start, stop sin. They tax it. There, there will be a day that prostitution will be legalized when they can put a meter on that woman's bed and tax her. You watch. If they could tax that woman, they'll tax her. And it'll be legal. Marijuana is legal. We'll move on to verse 35. Sin is a reproach to any of the people. That's what you said you're going to move. We're going to take a, a, a proud pride man and we're going to lift him up out of the pulpits of America because we want four more years of a proudful man that denies Jesus Christ. Because we're a Christian nation. And our politics of both Democrats and Republicans are just filled with lies and deceit. And bribery. And you hate the preacher that will call out your president candidate. You hate the preacher that calls out your country. Your country is sick. Your leaders are sick. We're no better than the time of Judah in the time of Jeremiah. The walls will be burning. The walls will be coming down. Washington, D.C. will fall soon as Judah fell in her sin. The king's favor, not the president's favor, the king's favor is towards a wide servant. Go up to the steps of the White House with a King James Bible, loving the Lord, serving the Lord and say, hey, knock on that door. I want to talk to the president. I want to speak to him, any president. I want to speak to him about the Lord Jesus Christ. You won't even be allowed past the fence. And if you're carrying a King James Bible, you love the Lord, you serve the Lord, and you do the Bible as best you can, and you're perfect to the fact is you are doing what pleases God, you wouldn't be allowed in the White House. 
And yet President Obama had a man, they're, they're out there in the garden, and I forget what, but they, they had the picture of President Obama and this man, and they're both out there having a glass of beer. And you get the president's daughters, they're up there dancing for, for all these people doing the Watusi, you know, that other stuff. That's the time of Herod. And the filth that comes out of the politics and their filthy money and their filthy parties. The king's favor is towards a wise servant. A wise servant? Do you realize in the office of the president of the United States, they have to have a Roman Catholic official? He has to be there. Even when the Bushes were in office and Baptists and, and one of them was saved, either the son or the father, forget which one. That Catholic there, the unwise servant, had to be there. Even the term, times of Billy Graham, that Catholic had to, well, Billy Graham was in the cahoots with the Catholics anyway, too. The king's favor is towards a wise servant. You know what a wise servant in the Bible is? It's a man that loves God, loves the Bible, and does what he's supposed to. Elijah, Elijah, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Paul, Peter, James, Jesus, David, Samuel, were all wise servants. But his wrath, verse 29, he that is slow to wrath of great understanding, you see, the wrath ain't a sin. Just don't get too wrathful quick right away. But after time, when the wrath came on the king because of Haman, when the, the plot was that he wanted to kill all the Jews. King got angry. He wanted to kill all the Jews, and then he's trying to sleep with my wife right in front of my eyes. And they, they put the thing over Haman's head, and, and he's sitting there, and the king, he built gallows. Put him on those gallows. The anger of the king got to a point it became wrath. And you know what? It was righteous wrath. The wrath is against him that causes shame. We've got people right now in America that are destroying houses. They're destroying businesses. They are looting. They are stealing. They are... They are uh, 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 Painting, what do you call it? Paint graffiti. They are stealing. They are robbing. The leaders of the states of Oregon and the president of the United States has no anger, no wrath against those people that are causing the shame to the people of America. Well, you know, he'd be doing something by now. It would not be months long. Why do we have a military and sin is run rampant in the streets of America, but we're in Afghanistan to protect Afghanistan? But you can't protect your own home. The leaders of America, verse 34, where people have caused shame and, and disgust to the name of America, they promote them. They put them on talk shows. They give Oprah Winfrey her own television program. They put a bunch of women who don't know how to cook and take care of a husband and put them for the view. And they take their half-naked girls and put them on Dancing with the Stars so they can do the hoochie-coochie in front of the whole world. Prostitution. They're getting paid for their nudity. That, 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 I don't care, that, that, whatever that channel is, that had the, the, the thing, that they're all upset about these girls, all half naked and all that. They're saying, oh, that's okay, that's not pornography. That causes shame, that causes, it should be wrath. But the government is getting mad at the Christian. The government's getting mad at the, at the Bible preacher. The government's getting mad at the servants of God. Don't you tell me we're a Christian nation when the cops can walk up to a street preacher in Daytona Beach, Florida, two weeks ago, September 2020, and the, the police officers tell the lawyer who is defending the street preacher, the Constitution in the United States law 
Court of the Supreme Court of the United States, here's the documentation that I carry, says he has the right to be on that sidewalk, and the cop says, I don't care, I'm going to arrest you. Meanwhile, there's a guy over there in one of the booths, he's selling that CBD or whatever, that oil, the marijuana stuff. I don't know much. He's selling that stuff. And there's probably people around the corner. They're smoking dope, doing dope, probably a child. All the crimes that go on in Daytona Beach. And you needed two police officers for a street preacher to tell him he's going to go to jail if he keeps preaching. Don't you dare. Don't you dare tell me America is a, God, is a Christian nation. Don't you dare tell me there's freedom in America when a preacher is told, you're gonna go, you're gonna go to jail. Don't you apply 34 to America anymore. You want to apply America to the Bible, the book of Jeremiah. Oh, it's so harsh preaching. It's so mean. No, it's not mean preaching. It's true preaching. Trying to get your heads out of clouds that are red, white, and blue, and get your get your, get your get your nose back in the Bible and read what is true. This world is not our home. We're just a passing through. You're supposed to have a tabernacle. You're not supposed to build a house. We got a church house. You're supposed to have a tabernacle. What are you doing building in a foundation in the world? And this is not our home. The Lord's coming one day. So for the king, the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 35. Are you a wise servant? Or do you cause shame to Jesus? Let's look at as a Christian now. Jesus, he's the king. Favor goes to the wise servant. Wrath goes to the one that causes shame. How are you doing, Christian? The wise servant it gets the favor, gets crowns, inheritance, reward. The anger of the Lord Jesus Christ for his servant that causes shame, wood, hay, or stubble, you lose it. No crowns, no rewards, no inheritance. And you don't get, well, you know, at least you try to get, you know, you don't get that. The world may do that, but God doesn't. If you didn't earn it, you don't get it. Now, get off being mad at me because I preached against America and against the president and, and office and all that. Get back to what the words, what we read tonight. And where do you stand? And if you stand offended because what I said about this country, then you need to repent and get back in the Word of God because there is no America in the Bible. And you're cooperating with the sins of the world. Where do you stand? Are you living right? In the eyes of God as a Christian, or are you living wrong in the eyes of go back and read? How you how you treating the poor? How you treating your neighbors in your church? Are you a true witness or are you a deceitful witness? Where do you stand? If we confess our sins, he's faithful and he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God wants us to do right. So do I. Now if I got to step on your toes. I will step on your toes with both feet. And jump up and down if I have to. Have I offended you? Find out where you're in error with God. 